A funeral lament sung at a vigil in Clondalkin where Joseph Strock was fatally attacked on Easter Saturday. Four days after he received catastrophic brain injuries from the beating, he died in Tala Hospital. The vigil was also attended by locals and community representatives last Friday. A world away in Croatia, his grieving father, Nijelko, has immense gratitude for those who organized the vigil and helped him in Ireland, but no words for those who spread hate. Joseph's remains were held for a forensic examination. But his burial is planned for this cemetery in Kropina in northern Croatia, where Joseph left just four months ago to join his childhood friend David in Ireland. We shared the same teacher and they was always looking at us on the same way, you know, similar kind of thinking. And maybe we was a little bit crazy as a kid, you know, doing crazy stuff outside and, and everything. But we was basically like brothers speaking about absolutely everything. There is no topic we couldn't spoke about. We wanted to call home for Easter here, but we was not able to find good connections. So we agreed that we'll spend some time together there. David is still recovering from the savage attack they both endured. I have seven different fractures through the skull and nose injuries and arcades and here on the ribs. Basically, the doctor, what he told me was that they are quite surprised me speaking with them survived the thing which happened. Because of David's head injuries and the blackout he suffered, he only remembers limited details of the day. When everything started, there is a total blackout and I, have, I, I, I can't remember. I can't, I just can't. I don't remember the attack. I know what the guards told me, what they saw on the camera footages and things like that. At four o'clock on Easter Saturday, David and Joseph met up at Euston Station. They went for a long walk and afterwards for a few drinks. At about eight o'clock, they took a number 13 bus from the city centre to Clondalkin and stopped off at Tesco to get some food and drink for the Easter holiday. I was speaking with Joseph what we will buy, what we will do tomorrow. And they just, then, then they started like, speak bloody Irish, you disrespect our country, you bloody immigrants, things like that that you need to speak English, that uh, which language is speaking and commenting like that. From outside Tesco's, they got another 13 bus towards David's apartment. Gardy believed that it's from this time that they were followed. Sometime before 10 o'clock, when they got off the bus at Grangeview Road, they were attacked. They came from behind, hit me first with baseball, something bad or I don't know what. I fall down unconscious. After a few minutes, I managed to stand up and wake up. I managed to stand up. I saw what they're doing to Joseph. I wanted to go to help to him and got hit it four more times and was done. And the last I remember from that moment was seeing the ambulance lights coming. And that's it, that's blackout. The next day brought further trauma. He woke up in terrible pain in hospital with two guardi at his side. I was with the guards basically all day. They were driving me around through the bus stations that I will maybe remember something. Then eventually when the time came that they can bring me home, uh, then this landlord where I was, the, he called the detective and told that he changed the locks on the house and that my things are outside from the house because he was afraid from what happened. He was then left on his own in the city centre. I was then without my things, in the shape I was, in the conditions I was, walking around, searching for the hostel. First of all, if you come full cover with blood, all damaged, with the things and something, if you will come to hotel or hostel or anywhere, who will accept you? They will look at you like, where did you fall from? 
A friend put him up for a few days until Joseph's dad arrived and found a place for them both. David believes Gardaí were initially reluctant to see the assault as motivated by anti-foreigner hatred. The thing which I don't, uh, which I don't like, okay, I understand they need to take everything, con consider everything, why happened anything. But, you know, uh, the fact that they took our phones and things, first they wanted to connect this attack with the drugs, with some, I don't know, somebody borrowed some mon money or something like that. First they wanted to connect with this, you know, just to avoid uh, why this happened, you know, and that's why they were checking messages through my phone, through Joseph's phone and everything. As hard-working men paying their taxes, David felt insulted about how they were regarded. Me or Joseph never took any kind of drugs in life, like not even thinking about that. That was not a problem. I didn't borrow money from nobody, never, because I worked really hard and have a lot of work hours there, so I had my own financial status pretty good. Joseph was as well. As a policeman, Nidelko Josipstad finds it disappointing that anti-immigrant sentiment wasn't pursued as a motive from the outset. David says the hate attack on himself and Joseph is just the latest of many. Change needs to happen urgently. I was a lot of times in Dublin and I always see these kind of things. I always saw these kind of things. Like how many times I saw in the streets, they, I don't know, saying to someone something, especially to some black guys or things like that. And these groups of people always attacking them. But this is happening a lot of times. Both men have been so caught up with trying to organise the repatriation of Josip's remains and other practical matters that there's been little time to grieve. But Josip's absence will be deeply felt. We was always here for each other, so much times. And when you have this kind of friends, this is not that you find them behind every corner all the time. So it will be really hard. Now everything is still fresh and I am, I am focused on so much things and dealing with so much things, but it will be hard to think that he's gone, like I can't ask him nothing and I can't speak with him or see him or nothing. So it will be really hard.